and welcome back to the Grey Invincible podcast. My name is Georgia McAndrew and I will be the host of today's episode. So on this week's episode, we are going to be giving you a key insight into valuing medical practices and the ability of Graham and Sybil's commercial valuation team in the provision of specialist valuations for a variety of purposes. We'll even be talking about football stadiums. So sit back, relax and enjoy this week's episode of the Graham and Sybil podcast. Welcome to the Graham and Sybil podcast. We are here today with Finley Mulvey, who is a commercial valuer and associate at Graham and Sybil, based within the Glasgow's office. Good morning, Finley. How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm really good, thank you. So, could you tell us a little bit about your role within Graham and Sybil? Certainly, yeah. Um, so, I've been with the firm now for just over five and a half years. Uh, I started in the Dundee office and then moved down to Glasgow at the start of 2017. I currently work within the Glasgow and the West uh, valuation team along with two of my colleagues and currently cover uh, a variety of commercial valuations uh, across quite a wide geographical area, uh, predominantly for loan security purposes, but also for private clients as well, uh, including pension fund valuations, acquisitions and disposals, inheritance tax, capital gains tax, amongst others. I suppose the role in its purest form um, is commercial valuation, so covering the industrial office and retail sectors with parcels of development land included from time to time. There are also occasionally more specialist valuations which we encounter, including medical and dental practices, uh, which I'm here to talk a bit more today about. Perfect. So as you mentioned, today's episode is all about valuation of medical practices. But how exactly do you go about valuing a medical practice and what do you take into consideration? So I think the best summary to provide is that the valuation process itself is split into two sections. These, there's the inspection component and the valuation itself. In terms of the inspection, uh, a piece of literature which we have regard to is the valuation of medical centre and surgery premises, um, currently in its second edition, soon to be superseded. So this document is produced uh, by the ICS and provides guidance to valuation approach notes and assumptions, general information about the NHS framework, et cetera. Um, where at all applicable, uh, notwithstanding COVID, we aim to inspect all properties. So medical practices are measured in accordance with the above guidelines and follow the template of net internal floor area, albeit there are certain aspects which differ. In contrast to say um, office premises and many other types of commercial properties, uh, surgeries contain specialist facilities and they generally have different requirements in terms of space utilization. So these include, amongst other matters, uh, the provision of additional WC accommodation, um, which is, is provided in order to um, enhance sort of patient confidentiality uh, and you know, separate, separate facilities for patients and staff, et cetera. There's also additional corridor and circulation space. Um, and there's also um, reception areas as well that need to be taken into account there are basement levels and first floor areas as well, which we need to have regard to, and the, the, treat, the treatment of those areas as well. Um, so there's a few sort of moving parts to the inspection side, if you like. Um, on the valuation side, um, I think it's important to note, first of all, that we do not value the goodwill or the business elements uh, associated with these facilities. We only value the bricks and mortar, so to speak. Uh, in most cases, when valuing these properties, the purpose of the valuation will determine the basis of value to be adopted, which would either be um, existing use value, um, the investment method, if you like, or uh, vacant possession. So this would generally be undertaken for the determination of market value and or market rent for partnership or transaction purposes uh, for investment or redevelopment and also in connection with loan security. So where there is a partnership agreement in place, uh, it is important to request a copy of this and to read it, as there should be reference to the basis of value to be adopted. However, the guidance notes do state that in the absence of specific instructions, it is usually appropriate uh, for the valuer to provide the basis of market value in accordance with the General Practitioners Committee or the GPC recommendation. So if we're just talking about GP surgeries, um, the two scenarios which we generally look at are existing use value and vacant possession. In terms of of existing use, um, this would essentially be where the valuation is being undertaken, uh, assuming the property is continued to be used as a surgery. 
and having regard to what's known as the, the notional rent. So this is a subsidised rent which is received by the practice uh, from the local health board. Um, the income can be interpreted, I suppose, as, a, as an annual rental income and can be capitalised using a market yield to arrive at a market value, if you like. This would be assuming a, a sort of notional lease term of, say, 15 years, um, and would also make an allowance for uh, repairing obligations as well. We were adopting a, a vacant possession scenario, and we would generally look at the nearest alternative use, uh, which would ordinarily be office use, and thus the, the comparison method would be adopted. I think for the majority of uh, dental practices which we've been involved in, um, we would value assuming full vacant possession is available. There are certain instances, however, I think particularly where older vintage practices are involved, where we may look at a redevelopment option. Uh, in terms of, say, traditional tenement accommodation, this may be to residential conversion. Um, however, in most cases, there are, are significant conversion costs to be considered, which can heavily impact market value. And I think there's, there's probably only a handful of residential enclaves where significant end values can be realised. For example, Edinburgh West End townhouses uh, and probably parts of the West End of Glasgow as well, um, including the park area and, and around Charing Cross, etc. Uh, one conversation we're aware, which is ongoing at the moment within the valuation sphere, um, is that within a partnership, obviously various partners may have different property objectives in terms of value. Uh, as an illustration, senior partners may be approaching with time and neither wish to retain the property investment for income um, or alternatively look to sell their interest on an existing use basis uh, to the junior partners. However, the junior partners may not be prepared to buy into the property uh, and this could be a barrier to realisation of, of property value. So this can be a particular issue where the, the practice building is perhaps old fashioned, such as a converted house or something like that, and perhaps perceived as no longer being fit for purpose. So increasing medical practices are occupying mo uh, purpose modern built facilities uh, which are often developed out by third-party developers who have specific expertise in the sector. Um, just on those points we do have our own in-house building surveying team um, who are able to provide input in terms of associated costs and, and fees for this process. So if we were faced with one of the scenarios we were able to provide, uh, provide assistance in that regard. So that would be a, a general overview of the uh, of the valuation process. Yeah, it was really interesting hearing about how you go about um, valuing the medical practice. But how else does it work? Are you retained by various NHS groups um, to undertake the various valuations and property related services? So the, the medical sector forms part of the, the umbrella of valuations which we undertake at GNS. Um, I wouldn't say that we're specifically retained uh, by, by groups as such. We were instructed to undertake valuations for various clients. In terms of the medical sector, it's usually a combination of banks uh, which require the valuations for secured lending purposes, um, where there's a, perhaps a commercial mortgage in place, and also from private clients. By private clients, I mean members of the health profession, such as GPs or dental practitioners, uh, who perhaps part own their premises and require a valuation uh, where the practice is either being sold um, or where a partner is retiring and another is, is buying into the practice. Uh, another example um, is that we have undertaken rent review work of medical practices um, and obviously the role of the district valuer uh, needs to be taken into account uh, as, they, as they would typically need to approve any agreed rent. So on, on that basis on occasions when, when GNS do act for, uh, on behalf of a landlord for example uh, then they're often negotiating with the, uh, with the district valuer. And what about any, any other type of specialist valuation areas? Do Graham and Sybil do other ones? Um, yeah, so we have experience in, in valuing certain specialised assets. We have a specialist valuation department, uh, which is headed up from our Glasgow office. Um, I'm aware that football stadiums uh, have been valued in the past, um, as well as schools and, and colleges, uh, veterinary practices, um, albeit without the, the goodwill, just looking at the, the bricks and mortar and also certain sections of the maritime sector as well, uh, including piers and harbour facilities, um, which we valued for both private clients and through some of our local authority work. On a personal level, um, I've had involvement in valuing church buildings quite recently. So these are usually looked at on the basis of the comparison method, 
uh, assuming continued use as a religious facility. Um, where there are redevelopment options available, again, we would generally pass this to our, our land and development team uh, who have the, the expertise and the knowledge to, to undertake development appraisals, etc. I think the, probably the, the one caveat here is that specialised valuation areas you know, they require different degrees of valuation input, if you like, and there will be instances from time to time uh, where it might not always be possible for one of us to take it forward. However, where instruction does come through, you know, we'd always look to to discuss it internally amongst our, our national valuation team uh, to see how we're best placed to assist the client. Yeah, how interesting. And sorry to bring it up, but it does look like we're near the end of it now. Um, but how has the pandemic um, affected values? So again, I think this can be sort of broadly split into, into the two sectors, um, also the medical side and the, uh, the dental side. Uh, the medical sector has continued to perform um, particularly well, I would say, as an asset class over the past sort of uh, 12 to 18 months and overall would be regarded as a sort of safer sector in which to invest. I think transactional activity has remained strong and its demand for, for primary care services has continued to sort of rise over recent years. And I think the sector is not only sort of emerged as an asset class in its own right, but has, has remained fairly robust against some of the, the economic downturn and challenges spurred on by the last recession, COVID, um, is able to offer a high level of security when compared to, to other sectors. And we're aware of yields in the region, Scotland, of sort of five to seven percent in some cases, and um, which would be deemed to be pretty good. Um, these higher returns are due to a number of factors, including long leases, uh, notional 15-year terms with government-backed rental income. There's a limited supply of high-quality investments on the market as well. Um, these practices don't necessarily come up for sale um, all, all too often. I think there's positive banking sentiment as well towards the sector, um, and also low interest rates as well are probably helping things. On the dental side, holistically, um, it can be seen to be a similarly resilient sector in which to invest albeit it has perhaps shown more of a mixed picture when you're analysing in direct contrast to the medical sector, which I mentioned a few months ago. The dental sector was uh, undergoing changes prior to COVID, particularly in terms of emerging practices and various corporate buyouts, etc. The pandemic has impacted the sector quite rapidly, and particularly when lockdown started, business activity quickly reduced, working practices changed fairly rapidly. Many practices have also sought to take advantage of government loan schemes which are on offer. I think fewer patients um, could be seen as a result of this as many buildings were effectively closed off to the public, say for emergencies or private dental work, etc. And <clears throat> non-urgent treatment as well, including cosmetic work, for example, orthodontics and the like, uh, were initially postponed. I think it's accepted as well that working conditions within the dental sector became extremely challenging. Um, there was a rise in overheads, such as having to pay for PPE uh, by the practice, and also deep surface and area cleanings were required both before and after treatment had taken place. Uh, also, I think in terms of kind of overall efficiency, uh, this was reduced slightly as the, the whole process for treating patients became more drawn out and laborious, if you like. So these issues had knock-on effects for, for market activity. I think with the number of transactions during the, the early stages of the pandemic slowing, what does this mean for purchasers and sellers? Well, I think from a, a general perspective, the key point is that demand continues to be strong um, in terms of acquisitions and disposals. At the outset of the pandemic, uh, a number of dental transactions were effectively put on hold um, as buyers and sellers sought to get the lay of the land, if you like, uh, in terms of what sort of effects lockdown and this reduced activity was going to have on their businesses. But I think the relief for sellers and investors is that firstly, the sector did show a strong recovery uh, in the second half of 2020. And secondly, that those transactions which were initially paused were effectively suspended um, rather than postponed outright. Um, and there has been evidence to suggest across the country that transactions are beginning to, to pick up again. So I think in, in summary, the hope is once lockdown um, eases and, and we return to normality or indeed a new normal, uh, then the dental sector should in theory continue to perform uh, reasonably well. Yeah, well, fingers crossed for everyone. Um, I think that was a really good overview, but if, is there anything else that you would like to add today? 
Probably not. I think um, I, I think just from from our side, you know, Graham and Civil are very much much open for business, um, and if anyone has any inquiries, I suppose, in terms of the medical sector or indeed just general violation inquiries, we'd, we'd obviously be delighted to assist as best we can. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Benny. It was great to chat to you today. Thanks very much. Big thanks again to Finley for giving us the lowdown on special valuations. If you have any questions or would like to find out more about instructing a commercial valuation, please go to w.g-s.co.uk where you can request a no obligation quote and discuss your requirements further. Thank you so much for joining us today and we look forward to the next one.